Hello, CBM Junkies. Jed Miller here with Comic Book Movie Report. Today's episode is all about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What has come, what is coming, and everything in between. In this episode, I am going to divulge what I feel worked best for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, what could be improved on, and hopefully things to come that will make sure that this property does not implode. Phase 1 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe began with the original Iron Man film, and boy what a doozy that was. What a great way to introduce this whole cinematic universe to the whole world, not just comic book fans. Unfortunately, The Incredible Hulk didn't have quite the stamina that Iron Man had, but the appearance of Tony Stark at the end of the film certainly cemented things in the heads of fans. After The Incredible Hulk, we get Iron Man 2, which didn't do quite as well as the first one, but still helped to lay some groundwork for future films and helping to tie things in together. And then we are introduced to the Asgardian Thor with a somewhat lackluster sort of debut film. But once again, with everything getting tied in so well, especially with those end credit scenes and certain Easter eggs, it's, it was still exciting. Then we also get Captain America the First Avenger, which does give us a lot of really good Easter eggs for upcoming events, series, and films. And then everything culminates into the Avengers, the big, whopping, epic blockbuster that we were all hoping for, and we got it. So as far as Phase 1, what I feel really worked was that over the course of about four years, we got introduced to every single one of the Avengers. And there were little nods in each of the other movies. Uh, there was a lot of just kind of like really neat little tie-ins. We got introduced to Black Widow in Iron Man 2. Uh, we had Incredible Hulk who didn't make his next appearance until the Avengers, even though he'd been referenced many times. Thor and Captain America had some uh, their first uh, solo films, which didn't do all that great, but as I said, it tied into other things, so that really made Avengers the big whopping success that it really was, especially with Joss Whedon at the helm. So phase two of the Marvel Cinematic Universe basically happens over the course of two years, so things are really ramping up as far as getting some good quality movies out there and amping up the characters and introducing other characters and hopefully tying things up and introducing us to different areas of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and this is how it starts. Iron Man 3. Great vehicle for Tony Stark. It, it, it certainly wasn't one of my favorites overall films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It had its moments and uh, I thought the introduction of the Mandarin was going to be great and we all know, or for those of us who've seen it, how that ended up working out. And well, uh, it just, it, it kind of just fizzled a little bit for me. And over in Thor The Dark World, it was a little bit of the same for me there. I thought, uh, though, it, it did move Thor forward, and especially being more in the realm of Asgard and uh, in his duties and responsibilities, and also really helped uh, build the dynamic between he and Loki. It didn't have much effect else on the uh, rest of the cinematic universe aside the ether. Uh, so, I mean, in that aspect, it, it kind of did fall short for me. However, everything changes with Captain America the Winter Soldier. Not only do we get uh, to see some further exploration of Black Widow with Captain America, we're also introduced to Falcon, and throughout the series of massive events that happens in this film, which all was fantastic and wonderful and really made my geeky heart happy, it really actually cemented the idea in my heart that Captain America is a really good character. And so well, the fallout of what happens in Captain America the Winter Soldier it basically felt a little bit more heavily in the TV show Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There are still some pieces that need to be picked up. Next, we head into Guardians of the Galaxy, which takes place in outer space. And it was a phenomenal success, and I certainly liked it a heck of a lot more than what I thought it was going to. 
What I really loved about this film is that it sets up a totally different aspect of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It had some throwbacks to other characters that were featured in the Easter Egg and, uh, you know, end, cre end, end credits sequences and things like that. However, I felt it should have been a little bit more... Something or other should have been just really thrown in there to help kind of tie things together. I know there's room for development for that. I just wish to see a little bit more. And then next up we have Avengers Age of Ultron. We are introduced to a couple more characters here by the names of Vision, Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver. And there's this big cataclysmic event, and we learn things about certain Avengers, we learn other little things, and they all come together, and then you get the end of the movie. So by the end of that film, we now have the setup of the Avengers for what is going to be Phase 3. So for the tail end of Marvel's Phase 2, we get Ant-Man. Now I have not seen this yet, so I'm not really sure if there are any new characters that get introduced. I do know there is a tie-in with an existing character toward the end, and obviously Ant-Man is going to be a big part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like I said, I don't know if any other characters are going to be included. I kind of hope that there are. I've been trying to be avoiding spoilers, so please do not issue any spoilers in the comments below. So going ahead into Phase 3 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they're already definitely in production on Captain America Civil War. This is going to be a big event, and it's also going to give us the Black Panther. And uh, as far as, uh, and also the new team of Avengers is going to be prominently featured in action. Also, we are going to get Spider-Man finally introduced into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So there's a lot, I believe, that is resting on Captain America Civil War. And I think it's really, it's, it has to lay the foundation of how the rest of Phase 3 is going to go. Otherwise, I feel that this whole thing could implode. Basically, it's over a three-year span, so there's a lot of stuff that they're going to have to cram into this three years and hopefully do it all justice. After Captain America 3, we are going to be introduced to Doctor Strange. I hope maybe that he gets a little bit more of an introduction in Captain America Civil War. He's been mentioned in The Winter Soldier. Hopefully we get some sort of visual recognition. We do know that it's going to be a little bit more of a horror-type film, which I think is great. I think it's going to be awesome to, you know, step outside of what is being done in the mainstream aspect of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's sort of like what Guardians of the Galaxy did. But my biggest hope is that Captain America Civil War gives us more characters, especially for future installments. We do have Black Panther. We do know that he's confirmed for Civil Wars, and he does have his own solo movie coming up. But also Captain Marvel does have her own film coming up as well, which I'll get to in a little bit. So after we get Doctor Strange, we are also going to have Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Now this is where I really hope that they do tie in a little bit more closely to the Marvel Cinematic Universe on Earth. I would love another space adventure. I love this team. I think it's a, a, a great addition, just as I think, you know, branching Doctor Strange off a little bit and having his own little solo story but still being connected. I, I love the idea of connection. I really, really do. I, I, I think it's brilliant, you know. So if I go into a Doctor Strange movie and I'm hearing things about the Avengers or Guardians of the Galaxy or, you know, whatever is going on, you know, it's, it is all going to tie together. And we know this because of the Infinity War coming up. So tentatively, what is next is the Untitled Spider-Man Project. A lot can be done with this, and especially now that Spider-Man is included in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, we don't know what sort of boundaries that may include because of Sony's involvement still. We just have to see what happens. We do know that it's going to be a teenage Peter Parker. Then we're going to have Thor Ragnarok. Now, I'm really not all that interested in this film. Um, and primary, unless it does do something really, really good and drastic to help drive into uh, the Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War Part 1. I understand the scope, the broadness of this. I'm really not all that enthused. I, I have 
never really been a fan of space stories aside Star Trek. And I think that does it so well, and Star Wars as well. They both have done that so well that I think anything else is, is a bit of a, a retread. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy did change my mind a little bit about that just because it was a little bit more diverse and it had a different style and its own its own feel. So it, I, I did like that in action. I guess as things ramp up with Phase 3, I might get a little bit more excited. Uh, I have to admit, you know, seeing a character like Thanos was pretty exciting. And, and what they've done with the alien characters, I thought, has, has been pretty, pretty decent. And, and especially in regards to Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm really, really excited to travel to Wakanda and get to see all the players that happen in the Black Panther mythos, and hopefully, um, I really wish Fox would get on the ball so we could actually throw some storm in there, but I don't, that obviously is not going to happen. So I, I'm really honestly not that familiar with Black Panther, and but he's been a very fascinating character to me, especially since all this stuff with the Avengers has become. Now, I really had never cared about the Avengers reading comics growing up. It was the Marvel Cinematic Universe that has really made me care about these characters, so I'm very excited about this. After Black Panther, we are supposed to get Captain Marvel. Now, this is super duper exciting for me. My hopes for Captain Marvel is that she's introduced at least at the beginning or somewhere in Civil War. I, you've really got to set her up because this is important to a lot of fans. This is going to be the first Marvel Cinematic Universe female character to get her own solo movie. This is a big deal, folks. Infinity War Part 2, obviously there's a lot that has to go on before I can even mention anything about this. Obviously this is the big epic conclusion of what's going to happen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in regards to this big epic war. Are they going to wipe everyone out, and that way they can start off her anew? Who knows? So at the tail end of Phase 3, we're also going to get an Inhumans movie. Now, so far, there has been no mention of the Inhumans, except for in the TV show Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So are they going to be kind of slowly introduced into Phase 3, little by little, as well as on the TV show? Hard to say, but I think they might want to get going on that. <laughs> So in closing, I think Marvel has done a really good job with establishing their cinematic universe. Obviously, they're, you know, it's just been colossal. It's been huge. And even the duds still do well. So I, th I really hope that Marvel is, is thinking ahead as far as, like, the longevity of each and every character that they introduce. Uh, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. isn't going to play... Iron Man forever. Um, I see him relegated to actually very many cameos throughout the major part of Phase 3. Uh, there have been rumors that Chris Evans is going to hang up his shield and become a director after his stint is done with Captain America. Whenever that will be, it could be the end of Civil War, I don't know. So you've got to find new ways to really start interjecting new, fresh ideas, new characters, and that's where I think Phase 2 kind of started that a little bit, so I really hope that Phase 3 really does that a lot more. So, you know, five or six, you know, years down the road when the original Avengers have pretty much all decided to retire, you know, if you get a little cameo from Scarlett Johansson or, you know, Jeremy Renner or something like that, it's going to be super cool because then you know that everything is still connected. And that's what I hope for with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thank you, CBM Junkies, for coming along on this long-winded tour of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Definitely feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments below, and also follow us on Twitter if you want to sound off on what I have to say. I'm definitely interested in hearing what you have to say, because I do love hearing from you CBM Junkies out there. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I haven't bored you too much. Hopefully I've maybe given you some insight as far as what could happen and what should happen, what might happen, who knows. But thank you so much for watching. Love and light to you all.